Up next, uh, we have Reed Landstrand. He's talking about uh, DigiKey, KeyCAD library. And uh, Reed has been with DigiKey Electronics for 11 years, uh, where he's a senior applications engineering technician. He works on various electronics related projects, uh, ranging from the DigiKey KeyCAD library to developing miscellaneous electronics prototypes. He is a KeyCAD convert over from the Big Bird. Welcome, Reed. <laughs> yeah, so as Dan said, I'm Reed Lansrud, um, Senior Electronics Technician, the Applications Engineering Department, DigiKey Electronics. And I've been fortunate to be able to work with KeyCAD almost daily in my job. So uh, life's pretty good. Um, so. Who is DigiKey? Well, we sell parts. We're electronics distributor. All right, simple enough. Um, what sets us aside from other electronics distributors is that we try to sell parts and provide as much customer service as possible. Um, where does that come from? Where does that philosophy fall in? Well, our founder, Ron Stordahl, who founded DigiKey in 1972, is a ham radio uh, fanatic. And he had invented a device that he was selling kits for called the DigiKeyer, which was a digital device that he had invented to send signals over ham radio. Uh, it kind of failed on him, but he decided to sell his excess parts to other hobbyists and enthusiasts. And <clears throat> he decided service was the key. That's how he's going to make business work. Um, DigiKey has slowly grown and really rapidly grown in the past <coughs> few years. Um, and we're 4,000 employees strong now, over 4,000 employees strong. The vast majority of those are at our Thief River Falls location. 800,000 square foot facility in northern Minnesota. This top picture you can see Winnipeg and you can see kind of the Green Bay area. So that's where we are. Um, ben had that in his opening remarks. Um, again, there's the picture of our facility. No, DigiKey really isn't painted on the top. We've got some pretty clever Photoshop people. Um, there's a picture of our warehouse, right? It's all done with people. There really isn't a whole lot of automation. We have humans picking every part that you order from us. And here's a beautiful thing. We're expanding. Here's a time-lapse video of the new state-of-the-art facility that we're putting up. One million square feet, 2.2 million square feet of usable space. And you can see it took about a year to put up the structure. And we, we get a bridge. <laughs> That's a bridge in the last picture. Here's an aerial shot of that that will connect the two buildings. So that, that time lapse was a view from our current building overlooking the construction of the new building. Um, now. DigiKey kind of cares about its customers, otherwise we wouldn't have customers, right? One thing was we've got a lot of, a lot of customers who have pain points, right? Working with EDA software can be a pain point sometimes. The DigiKey KeyCAD library was one of our ways of trying to solve that pain point. Um, what are the biggest pain points for EDA users? Well, libraries. Sometimes inconsistent, sometimes there, sometimes not. The other thing is the EDA tool itself, right? EDA tools will switch hands, they'll change licensing, they'll change just in constant flux. And some of our engineers, two of which are sitting in the back, have had discussions for years on what tool can we use that never goes away, 
never changes, never really causes pain points. Well, KeyCAD, right? So KeyCAD, what can we do to support KeyCAD? That's where the libraries come in. DigiKey KeyCAD library is a free and open source library created by us at DigiKey. Um, comprised of 1,148 symbols at this point and 462 footprints, which are combined to make atomic part numbers, meaning that those libraries, you put a part in your schematic, it's going to be an orderable part number from DigiKey. And the symbols themselves will have a multitude of DigiKey data that you would normally find on our website. Uh, the footprints, along with that, make the orderable part number that you would find on our website. Um, the challenges that we faced trying to come up with this library was that consistency. We have eight to ten techs plus a couple of engineers working on this library and creating all of these parts. And it's hard to keep it consistent. One user might find something more convenient or an easier way to do things. Well, you've got one person who made 20 symbols and another one who made 20 completely different. There's consistency issues. So this is our focus group to look at auditing the library, trying to bring it back into a consistent form. The other thing is accuracy. How do you go back and check somebody else's work to make sure that they got the pinouts right? You have to go through the symbols one by one, verify them. A few of the things that we're working on on the library, um, we've been working pretty hard on web linking, so now that you'll be able to find the parts on our website with the KeyCAD library linked to it. Um, it's not quite searchable yet. We're working on that. Um, but when you run across a part that's in the KeyCAD library, it'll have a link to our GitHub site. The partners library, which Taylor in the back has worked so hard with, trying to get a similar repo as our DigiKey KeyCAD library, but it will be provided by the manufacturers. I want to get kind of give a thanks to Trinamic for being so patient with us. They're our, our guinea pig for this one. That they provided symbols and footprints and we put it through our build process to make it look like our library. Um, we're constantly trying to expand the library, add parts to it. Um, this is difficult again because of the consistency thing. We just added 127 parts, and just looking at that poster that's hanging up at our booth, you can pick out the 127 almost right away. <laughs> um, we have to go back and audit them, right? They were added. They're kind of beta symbols right now. Um, Jeremy back here, one of our engineers gone marketing, has been working really close with uh, Schemit. And if you're not aware of Schemit, I think you should look it up. It's an online schematic capture tool that allows you to export right into a KeyCAD schematic file. And you, there's a lot of parts and symbols that are in that tool that aren't in our library. So it allows you to export to a schematic. You could share the Schemit files with other folks. You create something that you think is really amazing and you could pass it on to your friends. They could download it in schematic capture in KeyCAD. Some of the things that we want to do, um, we really need to verify all of our footprints. We know they're really close, but maybe they're not quite as solderable as we think they are. We would like to verify them all, get a footprint, a part placed on every footprint. We've used manufacturers recommended footprints on just about everything. Sometimes they're not always reliable. Um, we want to keep expanding the library, obviously. 
So continue on adding as many as we can. Um, we don't have 3D files associated right now. So if you're into the MCAD part of KeyCAD, which came out with 5.0 release, uh, or which was highly integrated in 5.0, that, that part of it we don't have in our library right now. We need to work on that. Um, and user input. It's part of the reason I wanted to do this talk today was anybody who's interested in using our library or is using our library, we want to know what you think. Whether it, you know, might be a negative thought or a positive feedback. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What can we do better? So at that point, I'm going to open it up to a dialogue. I want to hear any questions, any responses, any feedback that we can get. Uh, you presented this like this is the one software that you're supporting. Are you supporting the other, or is this really your one directional? We we do we do. Uh, the question was, do we support any other software? Um, yes, we do. Uh, we've got Mentor Graphics, that one of their free tools that we support. Um, we're working on others as well. I'm sorry, are you making libraries for other? No, we're not. Okay. Uh, we do offer Ultra Librarian downloads and Snap EDA downloads on our website, which do support those softwares. Yes? So if you find a part that's wrong, how did, what is your process for fixing it and releasing it? Okay, so the process there is we... Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, what is our process for fixing parts when a customer finds one that's wrong? Um, that process is usually done through GitHub since it's a GitHub, you know, type of a type of a uh, repository. We like to have customers go on GitHub, give us our feedback. We also have an area on our tech forum, which is you know just an uh, open forum anybody can add to. So we we go through, double check and correct whatever problem the customer brought up, and then rebuild our library. We go through a build process that adds all of the DigiKey information to it. In the back. So uh, coming from the open source software uh, side of things, one of the things that comes up a lot for these you know, uh, corporate level libraries is maintainability and standards compliance. Okay, so the question was, uh, kind of paraphrasing here, but what is is the process for a customer to come back in and contribute to the library? Is that correct uh, for the most part? The yeah, and what are the standards? Um, a lot of the standards, the standard that we set for ourselves is that everything is drawn up, created, and more or less manually built in the source file. Um, everything that is the symbols that are built are all based on DigiKey part numbers. So we, we don't use manufacturer's part numbers in the symbols when we create them. That's done in the build process. So any customer can add to our source files through Git and do a pull request. Uh, the footprints are all standardized to the manufacturer's recommended footprint. And if they don't, we try to follow the IPC, just basic footprint standard for that package. If there isn't one, we do our best to create one that's compatible. Um, naming conventions are kind of loose right now. We haven't set a very good standard for that, especially for the footprints. We try to fo follow the KeyCAD library convention as much as possible, but it doesn't always happen. Does that answer your question? All right. I'm just going to repeat questions for the benefit of the video. Thank you. That's why I'm standing here. <laughs> Anybody else?
Yes. Is, uh, oh, is there sorry. an indication of, of what footprints are verified versus which ones haven't been checked yet? Right. As of right now, no. Um, the, there are very few that are, have been like actually verified for solderability and usability. Um, being we were following the manufacturer's standard footprint, we we basically we're crossing our fingers and hoping that they're going to be the best possible. Right. Um, yeah. So the the comment was right, and that that's something that we need to implement yet is a way to, like you said, show that something has been verified. Um, that that isn't something that we've really put a whole lot of process into yet. Just trying to build up the library so it's useful at this point. Yeah. Very back. I'm just curious, how much of the, how much metadata are you including with any of the schematic parts? How much metadata is uh, included in the schematic parts? Okay, so as of right now, the metadata that is included is is some of the basic stuff that you would find at the top of the DigiKey landing page, plus a couple of links, like to the data sheet and to the product landing page. Um, there's a sh a URL right up here. That one is a URL without the country code. So like digikey.com or digikey.uk. Basically, you have to add that to the beginning so that you get to the right country code. But uh, that should be the landing page for that particular part. And then everything else is basically stripped out of that main section of the part. There's short description, digikey part number, manufacturer's part number, so on and so forth. And how does that, I'm not familiar with version 5 of DigiKey, for example, with the previous versions. How does that map to the default fields for the schematic components? So the schematic po components. How do these, oh, sorry. That's all right. How do these, uh, those metadata fields map to uh, the, the fields in KiCad? Uh, so the default fields are always going to be filled in appropriately. Uh, the, you know, the value, the footprint, the data sheet link, those are all mapped appropriately. Then the rest are all just extra fields that we've added. As, okay. Wow. Uh, as someone who's relatively new, I, I got to admit, I find the idea of atomic part libraries confusing. And it's it was a challenge when, like, I managed to import your footprints in the past and sure. your symbols and stuff, but I don't really know why you chose to basically fragment it, as far as I can tell, and, like, how that makes it easier to integrate into a workflow. So I don't know if that's too basic of a question, but I no, guess that's no, my no. question. That, that's a very good question. There's a, a, been a long debate over what's better, you know, loosely coupled libraries or atomic libraries. And it really depends on your workflow, right? If you're used to pulling in a symbol and assigning a footprint to it later, uh, whether it's during board layout or, you know, that workflow, it, it, our library may not work for you, right? Our footprints are, are assigned to our symbols because it makes it an orderable part number then in our system. And some people like to work in that fashion, like picking out all of the parts as they lay them out in the schematic. Um, that would work better in that sense. If you're just laying out a schematic as fast as possible without worrying about the exact part number you're going to order, then our library probably isn't the best for that type of a workflow. Another one? I'm sorry. Are you planning on automating uh, parts of the part creation process? 
maybe to a certain degree, but with this particular library, it's it's all about, you know, we're trying to create something of high quality and of good integrity, and too much automation can sometimes blow that out of the water. So in this case, I think it'll, unless, the other thing about large libraries is they take long load times, so getting our library to the point where it's too big wouldn't make sense. And automatic part creation can do that in a hurry. So automating it too much, no, probably not. We may automate it to help out, but not, not completely. Is there plans to uh, split your repository into multiples? If, if the library does get too large, it does take a lot in KiCad to load that entire library. So it would make sense to split it at some point. Where that line is drawn, I don't know yet. Um, we've already split it out so that our partner's library is a separate repository just so it doesn't lag too bad. How do you choose the parts you do add? So choosing the parts that we did add and started with was, uh, was a tricky concept, right? We didn't want to just go with what are the absolute hot sellers under the sun. Um, we wanted to make it useful to both engineers and makers and hobbyists. So we we did kind of a weird combination of popular parts with parts that we thought that we would use in prototyping process and then also ones that we could move over to a production process. So it may sound odd, but that's, that's kind of the process we went through. We went and hand selected a lot of parts. Has anybody, anyone uh, used the library very much? Found lots of use from it? Has that worked well for you? A couple years ago, I was, gonna, I was gonna try to choose a schematic package that I could use for a long, long time. Um, and, and I looked at several on the web and I found Schemit. And, but then I was thinking about longer term than that and I've gotta lay out a PC board. And so I started at DigiKey and found the KiCad that would do a schematic and a PC board, and I've been real happy with that. And a big factor in that was knowing that I had footprints and schematic symbols from DigiKey that I could order. Sure. So I've been real happy with that. Good, good. Uh, just asking for anyone who hasn't gone through this process before. So if I'm understanding correct, is, is, would the benefit be, so I buy from Digi right now, DigiKey, um, but I haven't used KeyCAD. So is the point that if I take the time to pick my part numbers and uh, design my board that way, will it export some bomb that I can just send to DigiKey and say I want 100 of this bomb or? Yeah, very good question, yes. That was part of our intent by adding all of this metadata to the symbols was so that when you're done with your schematic, you can export a bill of materials that is complete. So it has orderable part numbers, you know, quantities, everything. You can literally take that Excel file and drop it into DigiKey's website. Okay, so you don't have to, you don't have to pick the parts that yourself. You can just take that box and say, I want this. Correct. Yep. You can uh, pick the parts yourself or the, the bomb comes up Ready to go, ready to order? Yep. If I, if I wanted to use your library with another um, non-KeyCAD um, schematic capture system, is, is, does your license allow me to do that? So the license is, uh, the question was uh, of licensing and, yeah. The licensing that we put on our library is the exact same license that KeyCAD has on their standard library, meaning that take it, use it, do with it what you please. So, 
the what you please. Yeah, right. It's open source. Right, <laughs> open source, it's on GitHub for a reason. In the back? Yeah, I'm curious what, uh, what standard did you use to arrange the pins on the schematic parts? What's, what standard did you use to arrange the pins on the schematic symbols? So that was a combination of the KLC, the KiCad library convention, um, you know, inputs on the left, outputs on the right, uh, power and ground top and bottom. Um, and then at times when that doesn't work well, um, we deviated from that, but very rarely. Whenever possible, we tried to follow the KiCad library convention. All right. Looks like there's no more questions. Thank right. you, Reed. Yeah. Thank you.